Greg Check with DIYPlumbingAdvice.com here. Today in this video we're going to install a pressure reducing valve to reduce that pressure that's coming in from the city, which is often over 120 psi. We're going to take it down to below 80. We're going to do that with this reducing valve and we're going to install it right here on this uh, three-quarter inch copper pipe. It doesn't matter if it's going into this valve here or if it's going directly into your house. This is how you put a reducer valve on, onto a copper line. To do that, we're going to use some push fit fittings that are called shark bite. These particular fittings here will be threaded into the valve and push fit onto the copper with a nice smooth edge cut on the copper and no misalignment and that will form a watertight seal and you won't have to do any soldering to join your valve onto the copper. The nice thing about these shark bites for DIY projects is if you need to connect the copper pipe and you have a threaded valve or just a coupling and no threaded valves and you just need to connect a copper pipe, these fittings just push fit on to a copper pipe. Cut square, cut clean, no, no, no burrs here and no, no uh, uh, filth or solder or any debris on here for a good, clean, smooth seal. You just push fit the fitting. It pushes on a full inch. And then if you want to take it off, you snap this tool that you can buy with, with the fitting onto the uh, pipe, squeeze it tight, and pull your copper pipe back out of the fitting and reuse it. To assemble the shark bite fittings onto the valve, we're going to do a couple things. We're going to take some Teflon tape, put on the thread, threaded part of the adapter, about five wraps, one, two, three, four, five, and then we're going to screw it into the fitting. And I'm going to use crescent wrench and a pair of curved jaw channel locks to grab onto this. Normally this regulator comes with a union. We don't need that union because the shark bites themselves are a union. In threading brass fittings you're typically going to have about two and a half threads not screwed into the uh, socket it's screwing into is the uh, norm so you know how far you're going to screw it. So right now I have about two and a half threads not showing or not screwed into the valve body. Now that we've got these things screwed in, we can measure the full distance of this valve body and we can subtract the distance of the copper pipe that's going to stick into the copper or the brass uh, shark bite fitting, which happens to be on a three quarter inch shark bite that happens to stick in a full one inch. So a full one inch here, full one inch here. So I'm going to measure this total thing and subtract two inches and that's how much I'm going to cut out of the riser of the pipe we're putting the valve into. We have six and a half total body distance. So I'm going to take two off of that. So it'll be four and a half. So I'm going to take four and a half inches off of this riser here. Like I said, it doesn't matter if this is the pipe going into your house or into this valve here. This is the water going to the building. Uh, and in this case, it's also going to the outside yard, which is why we're doing this. The pressure is just too high for the yard watering. 
Now, we have to cut off the water at the meter so that we don't get wet. To do that, there is a valve down here in everyone's water meter that either the water district uses to shut off or you can shut off one here. Quarter turn, water's off. In this case, I'm going to shut these off so that we don't get the water from the house draining out and getting air in the pipes. So we're just going to have the uh, water between here and the meter right there to deal with, which is not very much water at all. Now here's a handy little tool, a tubing cutter. It cuts a square, clean cut, no burrs. And you put it right on the mark and then rotate. If you don't have a tubing cutter, get one. <laughs> it is easier. There's one cut. Where's my four and a half inch mark? That's right, right there. These tubing cutters are directional. They come with an arrow on them. Some of them have a little knob that you tighten to make it tighter and so you do so. This one's an automatic tension. Now, I can see that there's no burrs on the outside here, but I'm gonna deburr the inside of this with my deburr tool. It's easy if you don't have one of these deburr tools to just use a channel lock end. When I say that, I mean do it like this. You can deburr the uh, ridge that the tubing cutter makes. And this prevents turbulence from high velocity water flow. And it meets code. And I'm not letting those uh, filings fall in the pipe. To use this deburr tool, you push a lot of pressure on there, and if you'll watch real closely, you'll see that, that ridge that that tubing cutter made, see that ridge being cut by this, this sharp edge on this tool. Now, it's true a pair of channel locks could take that ridge off of there, but this tool did an excellent job, and that's what's not in your pipe. I'm going to look at the arrow on the valve body. Coming from the meter up, I'm going to follow that arrow. I'm going to push fit. I'm going to make sure it goes down the full inch, and it did. I'm going to pick this up and push it down a full inch. There's the arrow going up, and that's all there is to it, if you pay attention. Now to check for leaks and adjust the pressure. I'm going to turn this valve on slowly because that's the right thing to do to prevent blowouts and surges. And this valve, this pressure regulator valve, comes pre-adjusted from the factory at 55. But we're going to give the uh, yard pressure a little bit more. I can use this nut driver here. Now the adjustment nut on a regulator appears to be backwards. It isn't though. If you want to turn it up, you do not open the bolt. That turns it down. To turn the pressure up, you tighten it down, but it'll come with this lock nut on here. So first you'll loosen the lock nut and you'll start to tighten that bolt down, which will turn the pressure up. It came at 55 and here we are, it's climbing up. Now your gauge will be probably on a hose bib somewhere at the house, but we're going to take this one up to about 75 or 80. That just about wraps it up for this installation, and for more information on how to adjust your water pressure, go to DIYPlumbingAdvice.com and see our video there. And while you're there, visit that tip jar. Can you do it? Yes, you can, and I can help. Shark type of the kids. So here we are in the water. No, I screwed that up because we don't want to go there. <laughs>